Good evening and welcome to this edition of Chit Chat Live from the In-Depth Genealogist. My name is Shannon Combs Bennett. I am the Creative Director and tonight we have joining us uh, publisher Jennifer Offord and our special guest Janet Havorka of Chartmasters. Welcome ladies. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's nice to be here. Yay. Hey Jen, Yay. how are you? Thank you? I'm good. Good. Um, we're very excited to have you, Janet. Um, we're all fans of not only your website and company, but your books. And we were so happy that you were willing to come and speak with us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, is there anything in particular you want to say to get us started before we start bombarding you with questions? <laughs> Uh oh, did uh -oh. we lose Janet? I think she's locked up. It's okay, she'll come back. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know Janet, we may need to to stop and restart here in a minute. But for those of you who don't know her, she is the author of the Zap the Grandma Gap books and workbooks. Um, have you seen those, Jen? I have not. I've, I've oh. looked at the website and I've, I've uh, admired them from afar, but I haven't actually seen them in person yet. Oh, well, when you come out to my house in the springs, I know you're coming for a visit. <laughs> <laughs> I have them. Um, they're really, really good, actually. If anyone out there um, has kids, they are interested in trying to... Oh, hi, Janet. You're back. Yay. I got a second computer. It's okay. I don't have the best background, but um, you get to see our... You get to see our... Um, our... Um, Workboard. Project. Uh, <laughs> Whiteboard. It's okay. It is, that wasn't too slow. <laughs> I did have a second computer up. Oh, gosh, sorry. That computer just um, decided to overheat on me. Oh, no. Which it never does. That's my good computer. That's the one that doesn't mm -hmm. overheat. So we're hoping this will stay. This, this one will. Okay. Yeah, but it should. It should. It should be fine. Okay. Anyway. It's, it's just my luck. The last time I talked to you online, that happened, too. <laughs> did it really? Uh, I'm doing pretty good with computers right now. That one totally floored me. I was like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I was just talking to them. <laughs> Not a problem. I was just telling Jen, who actually hasn't seen your books before, uh, the oh. Zap the Grandma Jan Grab the Zap. 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 Zap the, grandma the Grandma Gap books before. I was telling her about them because I have them and I love them. And my okay. kids love the workbooks. Good. Uh, good, good, good. So they were a lot of fun. Now, okay, so how did you come up with that idea? Because I'm curious about that. So um, we, we started Family Chart Masters. It's been 11 years now. We do genealogy charts and we print genealogy charts. Once the, once the chart company got off the ground, um, what, it's been about four years now, uh, four years ago, once the chart company was working and we had employees and I had a little more free time, this was something I was really passionate about because I grew up in a very family history oriented family. It was just in the water we drank. It was on our walls. It was in the food we ate. My mom never sat me down and said, this is a family group record. This is, right. you know, uh, this is how you do it. In fact, I don't think she ever really took us to a family uh, she, you know, I grew up in Salt Lake. I don't remember her taking me to the Family History Library. I don't remember her taking me... Uh, I remember her taking me to visit old, uh, older aunts and, like, relatives. Uh, I remember her taking me to the cemeteries. But it was like going to the park. It wasn't like, oh, we have to write all this down. It wasn't, it wasn't dry. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, and I watch how people teach people genealogy, and it's so dry, and um, and that's not how my mom did it at all. We just grew up with it, and so we had no choice but to just become genealogists. It was just it was just <laughs> in the air in my home, and um, so I wanted to write a book about that and about how to just have it breathe it into the culture of your family. I just grew up in a very family history oriented family and um, so I really wanted to write a book about that. I actually grew up, um, my grandmothers were genealogists, I have, I have grandfathers who were big genealogists. I did a, a master's degree in library science 
-hmm. and um, worked uh, at the uh, library at BYU even, helping people with their family history, worked on the history religion reference floor, um, and was never interested in family history because all of my family history had been done. I was not interested at all. Um, and because, and again, because it was just something that everybody already knew in my family. It wasn't something that you had to go find out. It was like I already knew it. Um, and so it wasn't, I didn't become really interested as a genealogist. I didn't define myself as a genealogist until I married my husband and we had this kitchen table that his grandfather grew up at the kitchen table but he didn't know my 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 mother-in-law didn't know hardly anything about her great-grandparents who owned this kitchen table she knew they came from Sweden she didn't know where she didn't know hardly anything about them and I was like how can you not know these things like how can you not <laughs> this story so sounds familiar I'm, okay well we have to go to the library we have to find these things out and here I am a librarian and and we have to you know we have to we have to go find pictures of these people. We have to know these things. <laughs> you can't not know these things. And that's when I became a genealogist, was when we had to find out about my husband's side, right? And so and so that's when I started going, How how come you all are making this so dry? Like how come how come you 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 know, how come you are all filling out these forms? Like how can you do <laughs> you know, and so I came in at the back side and and so I wanted to write this book about you know, especially for children, and then and then at that point, um, you know, we just we just I didn't, at that point I started to uh, started to collect my own, um, and there was a lot of it, and so we got interested in charts and and how to visualize it all. Um, we just started we decided to start this company, which is a whole other story, um, but uh, at at that point, I had children, and I wanted to invest my children the way my mom had invested me. And and that and the company was up and running, and we had employees that could kind of take care of things, and I had time to write a book. And so that's when that first book came about, was that I wanted to teach people to invest their kids the way that my mom had invested me um, without making it quite so, um, you know, uh, regimented? Regimented. Yeah, maybe <laughs> regimented is the right word. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's all about, like, you know, the recipes and the games and the visiting uh, visiting your relatives and, and the songs and the the culture around it and the um, having it on your walls and decorating with it and making it part of Christmas or, or celebrating the traditions or, you know, all of those things that that surround family history and making it fun. And then but also part of that was by the time I started writing this book, um, I had done those things with my kids when they were little and then we started this company. And I became invested in everybody else's genealogy mm -hmm. and, um, and I was busy starting this company and I missed a sweet spot that you have with your kids between about 6 and about 12. Mm -hmm. And when I started writing this book, my kids were about 12, 14, 15. They were in that spot where, as teenagers, anything mom thinks is cool is not cool. It's not cool. And no. so <laughs> I had a really hard audience right as I was writing this book where they were like, no, this is not cool, mom. This is not cool, mom. <laughs> and um, so they were really good guinea pigs right there when I was writing the book that they were, they were able to say, no, this is not this is not what anybody's interested in anymore. And so I could kind of test it out on them. And um, so it was it was a good timing in my life where I could kind of say, okay, what really works and what doesn't. And then once, so we wrote the book and then I wrote a workbook to go with it for parents. And that's the Power Up workbook. And then once we were done with those two, I um, decided to write um, the children's activity books. And so far, there's eight of those. Mm -hmm. um, those are about 50 pages, and they're kind of like uh, coloring um, paper dolls, uh, crossword puzzles, uh, cultural activities, little fill in the pa fill in the pages. Again, making it fun um, activities, uh, things to things so that your kids will come and start asking you questions instead of the instead of you, you know, trying to tell them about it. Um, there's German, Civil War, uh, Hang on. British. What did you say, Jen? 
Jenna was trying I'm to say, I'm real curious about the Jewish one. Um, yeah. His family is Jewish, and I saw that you had done oh, one, okay. and you'd actually, like, worked with some other Jewish genealogists to try and, you know, make it as enriching as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I actually, my bachelor's degree is in Near Eastern Studies. Um, I'm really fascinated with, with Israel. I got to travel um, there, and, and I spent a year living in Israel, in Jerusalem, um, I'm I'm uh, fascinated with Judaism and and learned Hebrew as part of my bachelor's degree, um, but I got a lot of help. Um, Daniel Horowitz and um, uh, <laughs> now that I'm on the spot and I'm tired at the end of the day, um, <laughs> I hate it when that no happens. <laughs> That's what she's doing. She's grabbing the book. <laughs> That's so funny. No, I completely understand. At the end of the day, I'm lucky to remember. Like, I have to give them credit because they were a huge help. I, I'm sorry to walk away like oh, that, no, but I have no, to you're give fine. them credit because they were a huge help. Um, Daniel Horowitz and Tammy Hep and oh. Shelley Dardashti, all three. Okay were a huge help. Shelley went through the book with a fine tooth comb and, and they all three had huge suggestions. And I've done that with all of them. I've gone to the specialists in all of the um, topics. You know, the German, uh, Barabel was a big help with that one. Um, Swedish, Danish, we got some good help with that one. Cool. Um, you know, I'm not a specialist. Nobody can really be a specialist in all these areas, of course. Right. I'm fully cognizant of that. So, but it is just a children's book. You know, I don't have to be like an expert researcher on any of these either. It's you know, they're they're um they're fun. They're basic activities for yeah. anybody. I can show you. I can show you a few pages. I don't know if you've seen, but there's um there's the there's the paper dolls, and um one of my favorite pages on the Jewish one is about ritual objects. Cool. So one of Tammy's suggestions was that um, one of the ways you can sometimes unlock a Jewish past if 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 it's been hidden is by finding ritual objects they have that have been passed down in your family. Um, there's a page about making challah. Um, there's a page about um, Shabbat songs and just all sorts of fun things. And then my favorite page in all of the books too, one of the, my favorite pages is um, the Oh Yeah, Prove It page where you put an envelope uh, on the page and um, you, you, you say, it says, it says, you know, what documents are there that will prove that these people existed and, and get your own copies. One of the things that's been really key to my teenagers um, is having ownership and not just having the genealogist who has copies of this, but having copies of things that are your own. To you and giving that child ownership of their own um, copies. Of, That's worked uh, really well with, with my kids, too. I mean, I have a teenager and one who's still in elementary school. There's an age gap between mine. But, you know, I would make photocopies, black and white photocopies of the documents. Mm -hmm. And they liked having their own that they could then their take to their room and look at and analyze and... You know, I, and I, then I didn't have to worry about it if they highlighted on it or. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, at one point in time, my six-year-old decided that you know the birth certificate needed to be blue, but. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that saves your sanity too. Yeah. Digital copies too. If you've got a teenager, um, you know, give get them their own accounts and let them do their own things. My son decided to um, hook my some of my grandmother's research. In uh, British, um, back to the British kings that she had, you know, to Adam, and he wanted it all, you know, researched through Thor and stuff like that. And I needed to make sure he had his own copy of what my grandmother had done rather than mine. Yeah. So it was good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so. Um, I'm really proud of those, and, and um, it's been really fun. It's been a, a real um, labor of love to work on those. I think um, I think investing your children, you know, we did the superhero thing on it because 
Um, I honestly think family history saves the world. I think when you understand your past, it helps you emotionally it raise children who are much more emotionally healthy uh, and can become healthier adults when they understand the forces that created your family. Um, and, I, and I also think that um, understanding uh, the good and the bad in your past and, and, um, and how those forces came together, I think they really um, can be instructive in um, helping you uh, pass down values and, and all sorts of things. You know, my mom, I had a really strong experience uh, just this week about this that I'm going to blog about later this week. Um, I uh, I'm kind of going I'm I'm kind of going through uh, my dog is sitting right here back here. She can't go upstairs. Okay, there we go. Um, sorry. My um, my grandmother had uh, multiple sclerosis and spent 30 years in a wheelchair. And my mom, uh, it, I've, I've written about her on my blog several times. Um, I'm not sure how to boil this down quickly, but um, I'm, I, uh, you'll have to read the full version on my blog later this week. I'm sorry. Let me no, see that's if I can fine. Boil it down Great quickly, plug. Make sure you give us the website. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, I'll probably put it over on this app, the Grandma Gap blog. I've got two blogs. I've got the Chart Chick, which is uh, – Family Chart Master's blog, and then I've got the Zap Grandma Gap blog as well. I'll probably put it on the Zap Grandma, Grandma Gap blog um, because it, it's such a great example of how understanding even the hard things in your family's life can be so instructive. Um, and here I am at 47 just still learning so much, even from the hard things um, in my family's past. Um, I was talking to my mom about the things that, at my age even, that I'm, I'm wishing I had more control over in my life and things that I wished I was accomplishing better, um, things that, you know, kind of midlife crisis stuff, just things that I wish I was getting done more and, um, I don't know, you know, just talking to my mom this week about um, stuff that I wish was different and... and um, things that I'm still still trying to change in my life and um, challenges that I have and and um, and struggling to feel worthy. I've been I've been reading some Brene Brown stuff and struggling to feel worthy of of uh, uh, I, I think we all I think we all struggle against um, uh, Viewing ourselves as as worthy versus what we've accomplished versus who we are, right? Right. Like that's kind of just the universal thing. And so I was kind of talking to her about that. My my grandmother spent thirty years in a wheelchair. Uh, she stopped walking the year I started walking, uh, which happens to be the year I am now, the 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 age I am now. Wow. And then she. Uh, died the year my uh, youngest child was born. And so I knew her for 30 years. And she was the kindest, gentlest, most um, most patient person I can ever imagine being on the earth. She was very, um, just a very... Um, uh, amazing person. And a, and a really big force in my life. Um, even though I didn't see her terribly often. We, we only got to see them. They lived in California. We lived in Utah. And, and I only got to see them a couple times a year. Um, uh, but she was a big force in my life. And had, she, and, and had she died when I was born, that would have left a big hole in my life. She, she was a big force in my life. And um, I was talking about all the things I wasn't accomplishing Sorry, this is not very short, but I was talking to my mom this week about all the things that I was accomplished that I wasn't accomplishing that I wished I had, mm -hmm. that I wish I was accomplishing right now, and how I was struggling to feel worthy because um, I wasn't accomplishing things I want to accomplish right now. And she said, my mom nailed me, which she often does um, with my grandmother, and she said, "Well, your grandmother spent 30 years in a wheelchair, and she was worthy 
of your love, and she was worthy. Uh, you know, she she was important, even though she didn't accomplish any of those things. And I had to just go, whoa. You know, she was such an important force in my life, even though she didn't accomplish mm -hmm. the things that I'm trying to accomplish. Because she was just my grandma. And she was just she was just there for me. And um I don't know. She just she my mom just taught me this huge lesson just right there from my family history. I don't know. I Again, that's the that's the power of family history. You know, when you try to explain it to somebody else, it doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, it's no, not no, really working. No, it totally, it totally but, works because you know I've but done. But that's the same my grandma. Thing. You know, that's my DNA. Right. right. That's, that's she, my mom nailed it because that's my grandma, and 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 that's what family history does. Is mm -hmm. that that's your story, and so when you when you tell that story, it just sinks so much deeper, and it just. When you, when you use a family history story to teach a value or to do mm -hmm. something like that as, as a grandparent or as a parent, it's the most, power, it's the most powerful parenting tool we have, and we don't, we don't use it enough. You know? when, you, when you punctuate a story with a family history story, it resonates, and, and it sinks so much deeper. And so, right. yeah, you know... That's probably not coming, that story probably isn't coming across to you the way it came across to me from my mom. But, but she nailed it, you know, because that was my grandma. And it, and, and it just sunk. And I went, wow, you know what? That's true. You know, I'm, I have value irrespective of, of what I accomplished was the moral of the story. And, well, that's and one of the things. My mom nailed it because it had to do with my grandma. Go ahead, Jen. No, I, I was just going to agree that. Um, you know, that what you, that story that you shared, you know, it, it resonates with everyone. Everyone has that feeling of, I'm not worthy, I'm not accomplishing all that I should be. You know, we all have our doubts in ourselves. Right, right. And right, everybody does. It's, you know, it's, it's a common thing. And the main thing is, you know, look at what you have accomplished. I mean, sure, sure. You're doing some wonderful things by sharing sure. you know, with all these people. And right, right, right. People love your charts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, no. I'm doing okay. You don't have to worry about my mental health. Right? <laughs> like no, no, no. I'm just kidding. You know, yeah. it's, okay. it's you know, it's a human experience. And yeah, yeah, it is. You look it back, is. And you look back at your own family's history. You know, often, you know. I know for my for my own sake, um, I was very close to my maternal uh, grandmother, and when she finally passed, it was a huge shock to me, and that's what got me into genealogy. Because right, that I happens a lot. I didn't know all the stories. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested right. before then, and right. you know it it left this big hole. And luckily, I was able to have a biography that she had written. And oh, I cool. use that as a starting point for my genealogy, and and as I've gone further and deeper into her her life and what she you know what she did with her life, right. you know I'm even more impressed with her because right. mm -hmm. you know some of the the tough things that she went through. Her exactly. her father committed suicide when she was 13. Right. right. You know these kind of things, and she still she was such an optimist. She was right. always so hopeful, and so I just cling on to that. Right. And, it's those it, struggles. It's, it's actually the hard things that are the most instructive, I've decided. Even even after writing this book, you know, that grandmother who spent 30 years in a wheelchair, I remember watching TV with her once, and there was a thing about Christopher Reeve, who, who had had a, the spinal cord injury and that right. was in the wheelchair. And I remember her sitting there going, I don't know how he does it. And I remember looking over at her going, you're in a wheelchair too, girl. <laughs> like, like, but she had this this outlook on life that was just amazing, you know, and 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 so positive, and yeah, and and it's that kind of stuff that it's it's how they overcome challenges. Mm -hmm. And and in every every family has scoundrels, and every family has heroes, you know. And and every hard story there is a hero. There is somebody who overcame it. There's somebody who who turned it around. 
you know, every family has those heroes in there to look up to. And what better hero can you find than somebody who has your same DNA, you know? Right. Which is so, one of the reasons why I like to point out to people who are just, you know, essentially name and date collectors that they are missing out so much of the information from those stories and those memories and yeah. doing a little bit more of the really the connecting with the family and learning yeah. through and learning about the family um, because they were people too I mean our ancestors yeah. lived they had emotions they had hopes they had dreams they accomplished things they failed at things and to only see, we will some of those people we will only see a small sliver of who they were just because right. We don't have as much information now or right. it hasn't passed right. down to us. But part of me believes that through family history, even if we only know a few bits of information about them, as long as we remember who they were and that they were a part of us, they will right. continue to go on. Right. Which brings us a little bit to charts. And that yeah. is it's pretty amazing to be able to see the span of what comes in and creates you, though, too, right? Mm -hmm. And I love those charts that show... Just how amazing it is, the pictures of the people. And, and, and we fit a lot of stories and pictures and, and, and amazing things into, into what fits a marriage, into what fits into, into the children of a family. It's, it's so cool to be able to see you know, the span of, of multiple families that come in and, and, and create new families and new generations. It, family history is such an amazing, amazing thing. It's it's just such a powerful thing. It never ceases to amaze me. So, what I find interesting is yeah, it is. What I find interesting is the a number of people recently who have in the last six months I've given four presentations on how to connect with children through genealogy. Oh, cool. And I always recommend your books, just so you know. Oh well. <laughs> But it always fascinates me the questions I get and the people who come up to me afterwards who, to me, I'm just telling people the way I was raised. You know, because my grandmothers always told me the stories and it was always, you know, about the, 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 you know, oh, this was from this person and have I told you this? And, you know, we do this on these types of things because, you know, great grandma so and so always brought out this china dish. Or, you know, it was those mm -hmm. types of things and those types of stories. My grandmother struggling growing up on a farm. And, and mm -hmm. um, I think what I'm telling them is pretty, should be to me, is doesn't everybody yeah. do that? Yeah. But the, right. the number of people who come to me and go, wow, that was such a great idea. I would have never thought of doing that. I'm like, Really? Right. That's why I wrote the book. So you grew up in a family <laughs> like mine. Exactly. Yeah. That's, well, that's awesome. Well, well, and the reason awesome. I got into genealogy is because it's kind of similar to what you had said earlier, which is why I was nodding really big, because my yeah. son, my oldest, had brought home a family tree project, and he was supposed to do it through his great-grandparents. Pretty easy, you know. You go home, ask your yeah, parents yeah. who their grandparents Indeed. are, right? Yeah. And he would get extra Don't credit. Exactly. He would get extra credit for additional lines. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, this is easy. <laughs> and you should have sent me your file. We could have done this big, long chart. <laughs> well, I, uh, well, I told him to go and ask his father. And my husband didn't know anybody past his grandparents. Wow. He wow. knew his, his paternal grandfather. His yeah. great-grandfather was Gigi, which stood for great-granddad. Wow. That's but that was it. That's all he knew. And I kind of went, are you kidding me? And he goes, no, what? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything. And literally the next morning I was on the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots to do. <laughs> and, wow, and I, that's cool. And I, I cool. was like, this is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, we got to find out. We got to yeah. figure this out, yeah. That's cool. That's and now cool. his line is the most frustrating thing I have on my computer. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to do. Well, yeah. we've been working on DNA. We've got lots of have work is check, and we're we're working on DNA now. So we're we're making progress. So. Yeah, DNA is fun, fun too. It's very fun. Yes. Very well, fun. we're 
We're yeah. coming up on the end of our time frame, so I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything else you wanted to say, or Jen, if you had any last questions for Janet either. Well, just like you said, you know, when you talked about presenting, I think what's really cool too is that when you start sharing, especially um, uh, when when you start when you talk about sharing with the youth in your family and sharing with grandparents and in that intergenerational sharing. Uh, your family history, it strengthens those relationships because it's something that you share with them that nobody else shares. It, it's the one thing that the world, the rest of the world can't duplicate with them. And, and uh, you know, I talk about how my, I have four sisters and we are very different. We have very different interests. Um, we have a lot of different um, views of the world and things like that, but um, we all share dad's dumb jokes, we all share mom's recipes, we all share, we have this common narrative. In psychology they call that a family narrative, right? And and um, that's uh, that's the one thing we share together and, and it, that's, that's what bonds a family too and that's what creates strong uh, family bonds and when you have that between a grandmother and grandchildren, when you have that between aunts and an aunt and her nieces and nephews, when you have that between an uncle and his nephews, uh, when you have that between siblings or cousins or whoever, that's powerful stuff. And and um, so I think I think what we do is is pretty close to um, magical. It's pretty pretty important stuff. I'll agree. <laughs> so that's that's I guess my parting parting words. Well thanks. Did Good you luck, you guys. You're doing oh. great stuff. Thanks, thanks well we're letting me be a part of it tonight. <sighs> we're trying to stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> doing great. So let we'll me know if, what else I can do to help. Oh, we will take you up on that offer, I'm sure. Anytime. We will, of course we'll see you at Roots Tech, right? Yes. Yeah. You will all be out there. Yeah. yeah. Good, 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 good. I'd love to talk to you anytime. Awesome. Great. Great. Well, thanks everybody out there for joining us this evening. It was wonderful having you, Janet, on the show. We greatly appreciate it. And everyone, remember, we love to hear from you. So please feel free to drop us a line, send us an email, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And until next time, have a great time researching your ancestry. Bye. <laughs>